ICP, you know, as students around the same time, 84 and 85, and then became legendary teachers there. And many of you have been students of theirs. I have taken Brian's printing class. Um, I was trying to think about what you stress in your class. And I, I came up with patience and nuance. The, the patience to find all the nuances in tones and drama of a poem. Um, and it's particularly exciting to me to like have your work foregrounded because you've supported so many other people's work for so many years. Um, after studying at ICP, Brian had a collaboration with Eugene Richards for over 25 years and uh, has printed, made the prints for many photographers' books and exhibitions too numerous to cite, um, including Joe's. <laughs> and then Joe, who is famous for his getting close um, classes at ICP, which not having taken one, but having benefited from having other students who did take it and learned valuable lessons and that I may be wrong to interpret, but what it always felt like to me was about find engaging with strangers and finding out about, funny enough about them to create an intimate space with someone that you had no connection with before. Um, is that right? So, yeah. And uh, Joe is the author of many books. He's been published in all the major magazines from Mother Jones to New York Times, <coughs> on and on and on. And he's also been the recipient of about every fellowship you can think of in documentary and folk journalism. As well as having been cited for being producing the best picture of the year by the um, um, National Press, what is that called? Uh, the Press Association. Yeah. Yeah. Right. In 1990, 92, 2002, 96, even numbers are very good for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love you, Alan. You're the greatest astrologer for me already. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, Joe is a, a great person to uh, leave this talk with Brian, and, you know, hopefully you'll have questions. I see a lot of great photographers in the room, and um, also a lot of people connected to ICP for tonight. So thanks for all, all of you for coming, and um, I'll turn it over to you guys. Okay, thanks, Adam. So did people pay attention to you when you were taking these pictures, or were you just sat fly on the film wall? I was, uh, 
kind of uh, trying to be uh, as in the, as discreet as possible. I mean, a number of the pictures I shot from my shoulder, you know, or just holding the camera in my hand. Um, Can you guys hear us back there? Yep. Yep. Yes. Okay. Well, from what I remember, uh, you know, we'll probably just keep this conversation, right? Is that right with you guys? Yeah. I mean, Brian and I are best friends from way back. We shared the same classroom together at ICP, and I was introduced to Brian's work as a student, because you were a student when you started this work, correct? Yeah, I was, yes. Yeah. yeah. And I used to, we used to have our own sort of arguments, because Donna may not remember this, but she was also one of our teachers. No. Yes, you were. We did a workshop with you. So it was always about getting closer, and, and I would have this debate with you, Brian. Remember? We'd have this debate. Brian had a, a Leica, and he said, well, you know, I want to be discreet, and and so you were shooting from the hip. Is that fair to say? Or, or, or yeah, yeah, I was shooting from the hip at the time. Yeah. 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 Or hyperfocal, you know, like pre-focus. Pre-focus. Or a distance, and then on the subway, you know, you, there's right. only so much distance there, so you would... Pre-focus and then look for something that. Is that it? Oops. That's everything. No. Uh oh. Technical. Okay. Well, we always have a book here, guys. We can always show you the pictures the old-fashioned way. Sorry, guys. Just That's all right. I think I Maybe need to just change the. Um, all right. How about we turn the lights on? So I'll just let's just continue the conversation. Yeah. So so so. Um, you had your style, and I was crawling. Well, I don't know if I had style. a style. I mean, well, I, was I mean, just... you had your strategy. Let's put it that way. Your strategy was you go on the subway and you. I had one speech. camera. I had one lens, and I was scared shitless that somebody would mug me and rob <laughs> my camera, and then I had nothing. So basically, I uh, tried to, you know, be as kind of, you know, discreet. Discreet. So what lens was it? Thirty-five. A thirty-five, and yeah. you were using the. M4, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're going to have a light meter, right? No, no. Yeah. I, I carried a handheld light meter in the beginning yeah, just to check the exposure. Yeah, yeah, to sort of get an idea. So basically, you know, I didn't, I knew nothing. You know, I mean, I shouldn't say I knew nothing, but I didn't know, you know, I just didn't want to have to, you know, like, excuse me. Oh, well, you know, I didn't want to do that, right? Because then I knew right away someone would, you know. So... None of that happened, and I just set the camera to pretty much everything was shot at f4 to 30. Uh, we got a pop up here. Oh, it's another okay. pop up here. Why don't you just do it manually, man? I can, I can do it manually. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. Why don't you just yeah, pause it and then you can cycle through it? Because we missed some good chats here. Yeah, it's, it's okay. okay. It's over. We it's not okay. That's me then. That's your self portrait. That's your Vivian there. So anyways, we will always like the odd couple, Brian and I. We actually met our first wives at ICP. We had, uh, <laughs> uh, so we got to get a little, you know, we had, we, had, we had children at the same time, and, and you know, and it was really amazing. We were going down the same journey at the same time, graduating the same time, worrying about how we we're going to sort of support our children, all that crazy stuff that was happening at the same time. But, you know, you know, at least, Brian, you had, you had this project, you know. I mean, I was driving around as a cab driver then, trying to make pictures. Because he got a little jealous that my brother was doing his stuff on the subway, and I wasn't making any pictures. You know how it is to be a student? How many students were in this, in this room at one time with students? Yeah, you know how competitive it can be in our classrooms, right? So, um, and uh, so it was really quite exciting to, to see this work come up, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm glad that it's, um, it's, I'm glad it's in a book and it's done. Yeah, all right, so <laughs> I, I can, I don't have to think about it anymore. Were these all, did you make prints of all of these at the time? Um, no, I mean, at, when, in 80, when I graduated, I, myself and uh, Crystal Bross, who was a fellow student, we had, we made our own exhibition in the basement of ICP on 94th Street. And, uh, well, did you have one there too with the taxi drivers later? But Crystal and I did this show, and we did uh, Subway, 
And she, yeah, you did you did fiber prints. So, I mean, I, I did, did yeah. my taxi show yeah, yeah. with with eight eight by ten RC prints downstairs. If the, really anybody lovely. remembers the, where the old ICP was, downstairs by the phone was that was my gallery space. So you know, I mean, literally that was you know, and I was just really embarrassed. But you know, you guys made fiber prints. That was great, Brian. You know, I think we should read this 1984 because that's when you were making the work. Yeah. So, so if you don't mind, I'll read to you the back page of, of what Brian did, which I think is pretty brilliant here. Um, in 1984, the average income of a New Yorker was twenty-one thousand dollars. Twenty-one thousand six hundred dollars. It's New York, but American. America. Oh yeah. wow. Okay. Wow. We're going that big. Okay. Twenty-one thousand six hundred dollars was the average income in the United States of America. The average rent. Is this American rent or this is New York rent? No, no, I think it's in America, yeah. $350. Boy, oh boy, that's a joke. Minimum wage was $3.35. A movie ticket was $2.50. A gallon of gas was $1.10. And the subway fare was 90 cents. In January of 1984, the Apple Macintosh is released for sale in the USA. It has an 8 megahertz processor, number 28. K of RAM. This is really bizarre. Uh, in March, uh, a mobile oil tanker spills 200,000 gallon, 200, gallons in the Columbia River. April, the AIDS virus is identified as an HTLV-3 by a French <coughs> immunologist. In Orwell's 1984, Winston Smith becomes his, sorry guys, a little dark here, secret diary on April 4th. June, Donald Duck's 50th birthday is celebrated at Disney. <laughs> in June, also, Bruce Springsteen's release is born in the USA. is released. July, U.S. government orders airbags and seatbelts will be required by the cars in, in, by, 19, by 1989. Okay, Brian. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, that, that's pretty amazing. I guess you, you want to talk about San, San Cedro, California, 41-year-old guy by the name of James Herberty. Sprays at, sprays at McDonald's with a gun with gunfire, killing 21 people and wounded 16 others before being shot and killed. Boy, that brings back memories of today. August, uh, Oh Purple Rain by Prince. Yes, yes, yes. Comes out. October, The Terminator movie directed by Tate. Okay, budgeted $6.4 million, raising $38 million domestically. I'll be back, you see here. Uh, November, Ronald Reagan. Walter Mondale, McDonald's makes $150 billion worth of hamburgers. Um, December 4, African American youth board, uh, board in an express train in the Bronx. They attempt to rob Bernard Getz, who shoots them, who later claims self defense as subway vigilante. The event starts a national debate about urban crime. All right, well, I mean, you know, I chose, obviously, that's a selected kind of. Um, Oh, why don't we turn this off? <laughs> that we, like, yeah, because I, I, yeah. I don't know how to make a PDF loop yeah, if someone okay. else knows Let's just turn it off. And, we get lights? Um. It's okay, leave it there, right? It's fine. That's it's okay. Oh. It's okay. um, the, the idea of the timeline was for people who, <laughs> you know, weren't around, it gives a kind of a little bit of a, you know, it shows you the difference of where we are now. So the referencing of, uh, you know, the mass murders of, you know, in, in the McDonald's is, like, what has changed in our world? You know, obviously, you know, the subway has changed. It's no longer what it was then. I mean, you might be kind of sort of shocked the way I was when I came and I just was kind of like, couldn't believe that this was there. You know, I, I came from Montreal. So, you know, calmer, you know, nothing like this. And, um, you know, when you see all that graffiti, you, you think, okay, this is like, this is like, you know, crazy, like World War, I don't know what. But, um, So do you feel like it was an assault to, on your eyes? You no, I, I just sort of felt, what's going on here? It's like, how can people live like this? And, you know, everybody's, at one point, 
tried to sort of scratch their name in something. So this tagging was, what was it? It's sort of like this kind of crisis of, of identity and crisis of who are we and, you know, what's going on. And, you know, I just felt like I had to take pictures of it. And the pictures, I don't know if you feel this, but they, they're, it's an impression that I had that people weren't very happy with, you know, their environment. And so, uh, uh, when did you decide you wanted to make a book out of those images? Like, when did Robert? Robert well, after you know we finished school, uh, I, I kind of put it away. I I had a show in Colombia actually in uh, Medellin. A friend, uh, you know, got me hooked up there, and so I took an exhibition down and showed it. That was it, and then again, um, and. Uh, I mean, a lot of changed for me, you know, and plus, like, leaving something and then coming back to it afterwards. In one way, photography is, for me, um, a kind of a reflective process. You know, like, you take a picture, you don't just look at the back of the camera, because, you know, we didn't have that. You have to wait, process it, and then get, you know, contact sheet. So there's time between you know, so when you actually look at the picture that you took, there's this whole kind of separation, and so you're looking at something almost like, wow, you have a different experience of the moment that you apparently took this picture. And it changes. So even with this time gap of 10 years, I said, wait a minute, there's some interesting stuff here. Like, at first, I wouldn't think of putting in a blurry picture. To me it was like, that's not, it's not sharp, it's not good. It isn't good, you know. But a number of these pictures are soft because of that f4 to 30th of a second, which is sort of essentially, that's what I shot at. So if there was any kind of train movement or me kind of like, you know, hello, click, you know, <laughs> then there would be, a, you know, because I didn't want them to sort of be like, you know, I see you. But you'll see in some of the pictures, they do see me. They're looking right at me. And so that is also like in the book, if you look, the first part of the book, nobody's looking at me. Or, but in the second part, you know, there's, it starts, they all look. They all look. And so there's this aversion and then looking. Like, I see you. And there's this whole idea of like, you know, the mind games when you go on a train, you know, you watch people, you look at them and you say, who are you? You, know, you don't say that, but you, your eyes kind of like, you know. So it's about like, you're comparing yourself to somebody else in some way, shape or form. And um, that's kind of like that dynamic that it's really human. It's really kind of existential in a way. So that's why, you know, all of this thing, all the graffiti is existential in a way. You know, it's people saying, it's me, you know, scene or whatever your tag is. And the thing is, it, the graffiti in some situation was so elaborate and so thought out and so well executed. You, it's impossible to imagine that that's vandalism. It's, it's not vandalism, it's like an expression of something. So, you know, how did it get to that level on the trains? Well, there's other people who write about, you know, that whole sort of graffiti movement. But I was actually surprised that when um, I went into a hardware store, this is like, four or five years ago and I, I wanted to buy some spray paint and so I said okay where's your spray paint and she said show me ID you know, it's this young woman it's like what I said yeah you have to show me ID you have to be over 21 and I'm like well look at me I said no you have to show ID but I had to get out my wallet and show her you know my driver's license and then they went to a cabinet and they unlocked the cabinet and they took out spray paint. 
that's another thing that was in the book, that in 1985, they passed legislation to clean up the trains. And part of that legislation included the ban of spray paint to sale, to, for sale for people, anybody under 21. And that exists today in New York City, right? So it's like, wow, who knew? I didn't until, you know, that. Right? Yeah. Well, I want to get back to Karen's question again here. We, we talked about this a little bit earlier. So, so why did it take you so long to put this book together? Why did it take you? You said 10 years, so 84, 94, you well, said no, 10 it's years, more like 30. 30. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I always remembered Gilles Perez. I don't know if you know who he is, guys, but a very famous photojournalist. And along with, not that just Donna's here, we're not just trying to blow her up, but Donna would say the same thing, Donna Ferrado was here, that when you let time pass with images, something can happen. You revisit these images, your eye, you can see them differently. Yeah? And they grow on you. They can grow. And, and, and in a way, when I think about, when we think about painters or artists, who paint the same motif for like 30 years. I mean, it's it's quite amazing that an artist can do that. I'm always so jealous about that, that they can do that. But, you know, it's like revisiting revisiting an idea and and then just keep nurturing that. But I, I do say that, I mean, I, I'm going through what Brian's going through now. We, we, he's revisited his, his, his um, uh, subway work, and I'm revisiting my taxi work. And I was very young then, Younger, okay? and uh, I didn't know a lot, you know. I remember, the, remember the time. Well, we'll just talk about a little quick story. But remember, remember the time. Were you in the class when Salgado came to class with Fred? Yeah, class? yeah. So, Sebastian Salgado came to our class. Fred Richin invited him. Uh, he was helping him do his magazine work at the time. You, you were at Black Star. You were doing a lot of life. Don's doing a lot of life stuff, you know, of course we're all jealous, we're young photographers. So God comes. It's like we're all gonna show our work. I showed him taxi. And and <laughs> I was devastated because you know he didn't respond. And I, I went into this really dark space for a couple of weeks, personally. <laughs> and uh, you know, started photographing myself in the bathtub because nobody loved, you know that feeling you don't talk about. <laughs> Staying in the same building, don't you remember? You yeah, stayed yeah. in the same building in Park Slope <laughs> together. You stayed upstairs, I stayed downstairs. So we had a lot to share. We shared a lot of things. But and then, then I remember telling you, maybe you don't remember this conversation. It's like I told Brian, I said, you know what? He showed other Americans. Fantastic work. I love that work very much. This is my favorite work. Um, so God shows other Americans, along with Sahil and the other works. And I said, man, I can do that, Brian. I can do that. And then, then the same thing happened in Mary Ellen Marsh class. Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> but the thing was, you know, when they started spinning on us, this was the key. Seven years it took Salgado to do other Americans. I don't know, India for Mary Ellen went on for like, what, decades, right? And Donna with, with the public enemy work, I mean, with, uh, uh, the, the, the domestic violence work, you know, and what that entailed. You know, her going into, I remember, like it was yesterday. Philadelphia Inquirer, she's on assignment, she goes in, she's following the cops, it's this domestic violence situation, right? And there's the family in conflict. And you know, that's like a moment that, that we revel <coughs> as these moments we're trying to grab on the subway, and we're just small, so we have to get hold on to these little stories that we're doing, looking at these big people coming into the class and saying, go be your dad. But, you know, sometimes it, take, it took us a little bit longer to get there, but... I think um, for me also, uh, you know, I was busy doing other stuff, printing, and I never really went back to it and, until I made like some big prints of the work and people were like, oh, that's interesting, you know, because it wasn't there anymore. Um, and so I, I understand what you're saying about, you know, this was all shot though in, within one year. and. Um, why did I wait so long? I just didn't think that you know the work was was strong enough to be a book until I started to accept 
the idea that pictures don't have to be sharp and that I, there, there's more pictures here, like literally in that first group of pictures that I made an exhibition for Columbia, um, half of those pictures I took out and I rediscovered on the contact sheets, well, there's 48 pictures there. So I rediscovered all these other pictures that I had not seen, you know? And so it, it's that whole process of understanding what you're looking at can take time. And then, you know, how they work together. Because not all pictures are necessarily great pictures, trust me. But when you knit them together, they create a kind of a matrix of meaning or of expression or sentiment, right, that speaks better as a group than individually. You know, uh, you know, Robert Frank's The Americans, is, they're not all great films, <coughs> you know, but as an ensemble, they're very impactful because they keep hitting home the same kind of, you know, message, you know what I mean? So, um, I think for me it was like, well, how do I make this work? And so this is what, this is the result of that. How, how, how successful your, it is, I don't know. How did your printing style change from when you met him to when you were doing the From match? the first time, I was a better printer. You were? I was a better printer after, oh yeah, than the first time. Oh, I was now using, you're a better printer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a better printer now. Yeah. So, um, and also, I, I made much bigger prints. They were all just 11 by 14 prints. So going bigger kind of makes them, I don't know, some, gives them some air. Yeah. You know, How much alive. bigger did you make them? 20 by 24. Yeah. Yeah. 35 millimeter. Yeah. Yeah. But even 30-40s you made, right? 30 yeah. by 40s. Some 30-40s, yeah. I even sold them. Uh, but um, I think it's more interesting, I mean the idea of like that timeline, it's kind of like, again, it's reflection, like here we are, our, you know, our cell phone has got more memory than that Apple computer that they first came out with, I mean 8 megahertz processor, come on, <laughs> right? Um, and the fact that, you know, I wanted to put it in the book, but I didn't. Uh, you know, that in 1984, McDonald made its 50 billion hamburger. Well, look at the sun. Today, it's 99 billion. So you can measure your life in hamburgers. <laughs> you know. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I'm, you know, kind of like... I'm not sure I would be. Right. And Donald Duck celebrated his 50th birthday, and who knows what Donald Duck is going to do next. But you know, Brian, you, you were photographed in 1984. I mean, the city was a, was a mess. Whoever well, we lived here in 84 can, can honestly, I mean, just what we did look like that. And, you know, we were working also on another project, the gentrification of East Harlem. Yeah. And if you want to talk about housing issues, I mean, it, it was a freaking war zone up there, and it was a war zone down here and many other places. So there was just a lot going on. Crack was coming out then, and AIDS yeah. was coming out then, and you know, the economy was very rocky, and the city owed a lot of money, and you know, it wasn't Bloomberg City, that's for sure. I mean, what we have now is the result of Giuliani and Bloomberg City. That's what this beautiful aluminum glass city that we have now is all about. It's all about I, I guess so, so like, you know, if you see something that is no longer there, when you look at it, you kind of like, it gives you, you know, like what a, a millbone, you know, it's like a milestone. So you can measure, well, sort of, how far have we come? And in some respects, you know, look at the subway system. It's gleaming, it's like, you know, you can hear an announcement where you, you could never hear the announcement, you know, on the old cars. The graffiti is gone. However, you know, I guess it. But what about the if you read the text at the end? You, you, there's a two-page text. It, it's trying to sort of say, you know, 
we need to it's behind. And I think by looking back and looking at this work, it, it, it kind of can inform us about where we are. Because if somebody killed 20 people with automatic weapons in San Ydro, right? And it's happening all over the place now. To just really, you know, yeah, we've got all this modern technology, but are we any different? But what, what have we learned? What about, like, uh, the, the trains are different physically, they look different, but what about the stories inside the trains? What about the relationships with the people that you focused on? I don't think that's different. I think that that same kind of dynamic of, you know, are you looking at me? Are you looking at me? You know? It's like you get that. So, that's not different. It's more crowded though, right? Huh? It's more crowded now, right? Yeah. Oh. Oh, it was oh, it's then. more it, oh, yeah. it's more crowded, but the service was bad then that I mean literally that guy in between the cars, that individual, people used to unhook those you know those cables because they couldn't get into the cars and they'd jump up on the, the outside and you could have five, six people holding on in between the cars if, if you guys were around at that time, they were doing that riding that way. And that was, you know, that was dangerous. So, I think you brought on a point which I think is is, is important for America, today, and that is history. I mean, we are serious as Americans. We are seriously not paying attention to where we came from. Everybody's all about this future. I mean, I mean some of us have had the fortunate. Uh, um, uh, to, to be able to go out to Cupertino, you know, to photograph, to meet some of these so-called big money people. And, you know, as we move forward with all this great stuff that, all these great leaps we've made, I really, I think, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, this is not about race, this is not about class, this is, it really is about us trying to remember, because we can learn from, from history. We really can, and in a way, this is historical work for New York City because, I mean, it shows a time. I mean, the time frame is also very interesting for me uh, with these pictures because, you know, being a, growing up in New York City and watching the transition of these, these eras and these decades and these presidents and these mayors and these conflicts and here we are all over again looking at a whole bunch of same issues again. You know, when do we really get a chance to really talk about history? I mean, even in, even in school, in schools, curriculums across the country have shifted so you guys can make a living. I mean, if you look at curriculums, I mean, liberal arts curriculums have been cut. Arts curriculums have been cut. I mean, we're always the first things to get cut, right? So, but I think we can really learn from photography. I mean, I mean, you guys saw last week what happened on Facebook with this image of, of this girl running down with the Agent Orange on her skin, and how it was, you know, how, how the, 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 what was it, the Icelandic press or the Norwegian press put it on the front page and made a statement and said, this is about war. This is about children of war. And then it was this big, because that's the restrictions on Facebook is not to show that image nudity on, on Facebook, but it's a historical image, which, I mean, I remember when that image came out. Brian, you remember it when it came out in the paper? Do you remember Donna? I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I think you're really getting off the point here right now, because this book, it took you 35 years to do this book, but now we're seeing it. You know, you're showing us something that's pretty half-assed, and you're not really respecting your own work right now. We should do something you, you've got to create something that where we hear the old trains rumbling, we hear the doors opening, we hear the sounds, and you have to put together a proposal and go to the MTA system and show them what you have. You've got the beginning of something, but you can't just like throw it out there and say, well, this is what I did, and maybe it's historic, and maybe this and that. If you don't understand what you have right now and how to really make it into something memorable, it's just going to get tossed aside. And nobody's going to do it for you. You've got to do this. If you don't know how to go and talk to these people, like in the museum, 
This is this could be a huge seller for them. You've done the work, but you have to be. It. And what do they say? Um, the person who's responsible for buying the book said that she would uh, order the book from, uh, you know, that. They said they didn't have anything like that. Great person, like you got to push it, and if you're yeah. not good at that, somebody has to push it for you. Yeah, no, I agree. And you have to stay focused on this. Nobody has this, you know. We have like Bruce, Bruce Davidson. Did yeah. a Everybody's done a subway book, yeah. but yours is one of the grittiest and one of the darkest. And and we haven't seen these images before. And this, like Joe was saying, this is a big part of our history as New Yorkers. But you have to do something more with it. Yeah. And you know, all of this information at the back is nice and chatty. Yeah, yeah. But it should be all about the trains. And maybe like the deaths that happened in the trains and the movies that were made and this and that. And you know, like how many trains did they have then? Mm -hmm. It's all about the history of the subway system here. Yeah. And this is the big deal. And you've got to understand what you have. You have to understand your gift to the city with this. It's big. Well, I think that's what tonight is about. So we're recognizing Brian with his work tonight, really and and I think it's 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 I'm proud that Brian has done this work and put this work out. And sometimes it does take a little bit more time to get a grip. I mean, I respect you, Donna, because of the dedication you've had towards your projects and decades of pushing forward. I do think that this could be the first step in in a, in a larger conversation, in a in a larger idea, a larger project. You might be the guy, I mean, I could see maybe even doing a video, you know, a piece about the trains and maybe, you know, you narrating or being a producer and, and thinking We're about some of the issues, thinking yeah. about some where we are today. You know, my brother's a conductor, right? So, yeah. on the MTA, and, and I, I hear a lot of things from him. It's just quite amazing to, it would be amazing if you were able to go back. And it won't be this way, but, um, we can talk more about it, but I think that there's, there's, yeah, no, there's I, a point I, to what you what you brought up there. I understand it's, what you're saying. I'm just not. You, 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 just, this is great that it's on the spine here. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. 1984. <coughs> this is a treasure. Well, um, I just you know I. Your pictures are a treasure. Well, thank you. And they belong in the history of the libraries. So you know, New York downtown. I just don't right know if I'm like the, the person to do that. You're not. The branding. <laughs> thing. Well, the sales. But, 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 hang on. People but somebody who got a copy of the book left it up at the museum of the city of New York for what's his name there, the director of uh, the museum. You know, the. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's his name? Carol. Sean, Sean, Sean? Sean, yeah. Yeah, curator, yeah, 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 yeah. Sean. Yeah. Oh, the museum and was sitting there, but you contacted know. the transit museum, obviously, but yeah, you gotta go down and maybe, yeah, you know, sure. immolate myself with exactly. the book in my hand. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's it. I mean, do, do, no, what, I need to do so much. It's you just done. have to, you know, you put them in the car, and you go around in the car. I mean, we have a friend of ours from, from, Los Angeles, from uh, California who, who wrote a book um, about his life, and, uh, you know, he's an ex-prisoner, Gangster and crippled, but he carries his books with him everywhere he goes. It's somebody, I'm going to for food for less. And, and Jesse, you know, he's like, Hey, you want to take a look at my book? You know, he's just bought some company, I bought some groceries, and he's got the groceries. Okay. And so we can sell right There you go. We can sell Anybody want to book? Wait, before, before you start popping them out, Brian, hold on a second. I, I think the book signing, Brian, 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 we had 50, in, nine, in 2000. 13, 2014, we had 50 million visitors come to New York City. 50 million visitors come here to New York City. This book, I think, just with this, just just that, is eye-catching, right? With the subway, right? This should be a moment. Should be where the tourists go, right? Wherever the museums are. And I'll go with you if you want. I will take the books and we'll go knock on the door and say, who do we see? Shake their hand. I mean, I did that with Spanish Harlem. I went around and yeah, you have your book and you know, you're the encyclopedia salesman now. So it's like the old school. <laughs> 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 and then the salesman. Yeah. Yeah. So they should be doing that, right? Mmm. <laughs> 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 you know, that's like... No, I, I think you, you have to be your own, you know, you have to be able to get it out there and, uh, you know, 
But when you were saying stuff about you want to hear, what were you talking about in terms of you want to hear the sound of the train? What were you yeah, all that? I want to hear the trains coming to life. I want to hear the you know the high heels and coming down so the like subway videos, stairs like and presentation. Well, sound you need yeah. great, and I can introduce you to an incredible sound artist, a young woman. He's you know it'd be phenomenal to just go out there for one day and gather these sounds. And then you put together a slideshow. But we did uh, we did a little uh, video teaser of that, and we put it out there on YouTube of the subway, and then okay. flashing back to these old pictures back and forth. Great. Yeah, I can send you uh, the clip. That's great. Sure. That's yeah. But the potential, I think, what well, well, I think what's being raised here now, Brian, yeah. is Eliza, is there's a potential now for this to go to open up. To a, a larger media platform, right? And right. TV, for sure. Can get it on MSNBC, you know? ABC I mean, in the I morning, mean, and that. No, yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it can happen, and, yeah. and 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 you know, I have to say that that I, I feel like Brian as well, you know. Being 65, you kind of slow down a little uh, bit. No, that's not no, 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 wait, 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 wait. I'm not talking about slowing down and stopping the work. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about there are certain things that I'm really good at and certain things that we're not very good at. So we we get the people, the younger people, that may be interested in the book, that can do the sound, they can do the video, they can really bring it to light. You have the content, we have it here. So there, there's... And you're already into that. He's already into into sound. You always love sound and pictures. And yeah, no, stuff. there's a whole. Yeah, you gotta like so. get it out there, basically. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, yeah, but but I'm not. Why wouldn't you use historical footage? Yeah. Maybe, maybe I mean, maybe instead of. I, have, I don't know. Uh, where I, start. Unless we're gonna do a uh, uh, now and then oh, okay. kind of a comparison, but you really need to to dig into the time it was. It was a moment in time. Yeah. And it's really all about New York. So you do that timeline of everything that's happening around the country. I think you really, you really need to focus on the city. For example, the Getz case. Who will ever forget? Yeah. I mean, that right. was exactly. a huge Just moment. Again. I look back on my years in New York, oh, yeah. and that yeah. is yeah. in the top five. Yeah. You know, big stories in our time here, but that was post, you know, right. pictures with this. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. You could, well, that's, uh, you could right. expand it. Right. That way. Uh, but I think that's another something else. The book is what it is. I just put the timeline to kind of give people a, a sense of context. And obviously, it's not an objective timeline. It's really, you know, kind of. I chose it all because, you know, Donald Duck. I mean, how does that relate <laughs> uh, yeah. to the subway? Uh, yeah, I can't but, answer you know, that. I'm be president, you know, I mean. Yeah, in the meantime, you have those books, and how much are they? What? Are you taking checks? Well, <laughs> so the book is $45. Okay. Are you taking checks? Igor, yes. Okay. Checks or cash? Checks or cash. Okay. Don't bounce them on me, please. Yes. Igor. Oh, but wait, yeah. you, if you would mind uh, talk, uh, telling us a little bit about the text pieces that are inside the book. Say it again. Text. The text, the text like these quotes that you put inside the book. The Sorry, what? The Oh yeah. If you can talk a little bit about these things. Um, the, 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 the Orwell quote is, um, you know, comes at after the there's a triptych of two people sitting on a bench, kind of, you know, not recognizing each other and. Uh, it's just a quote that I lifted out of 1984. 1984 was an important book for me. Uh, about, you know, a lot of things. And um, I'm digested through the body of a bird. Um, you know, that's... And, you know, this is shot in 84, and I don't know if you know 1984, but uh, it was written in 1948, and he inverted the, the year that he wrote it to 1984 because it's kind of a dystopia about the future, and, um, and there are 48 pictures in the book. So, you know, the quotes kind of connect the, to each other in some way, you know? Yeah, I'm asking I, I studied literature, with, you know, at university, so... You know, poetry and and uh, photography are very close to me in my thinking. 
So um, they interconnect, and I can find, you know, it sort of resonates. I don't know how to explain it, but you know what I mean? It's like it's not supposed to hit you over the head with anything, but it's supposed to kind of like let you sort of, you know, just suggest or whatever, you know, to. Did that answer? Did you want to? Is that something else you wanted to add? Uh, no, I, I and there's a quote. The other ones one of my the favorite quote is uh, the one in the back at the end, which is uh, Jean Paul Sartre. Uh, you know, l'enfer c'est les autres, which means hell is the others. It's kind of a famous, but I, instead of quoting them like that, I put it in Verlan. Right? When Verlan is simply, um, it was kind of like a hipster way in the 80s in, in, in France uh, of uh, inverting two syllable words. So, femme became meuf. It means, you know, ma femme, ma meuf, ma blonde, my girlfriend, you know, ma meuf, which is just femme backwards. So, it's in, in the book, it's in Berlin. So, maybe a Perry photo, it'll <laughs> be a sensation. Uh, um. You see, that there's been a lot of uh, really great suggestions for further presentation later on, but uh, uh, from my part, I just want you to, to know that I, when I look at the book, when I go through the pages, and I've done it already many times, I do hear the train, and I do feel the adrenaline of the photographer taking pictures, and uh, the tension of looking at someone else in the train and maybe being seen by someone else. And I'm not sure that I really need anything else to really get what you're trying to tell me and to really understand what your experience there was. It's great to have the quote. It's great to also have those other information that plays in context, the work that you have done. Which is also, to me, a, a, another interesting aspect. It's a, the subway is this arena that we can even, we might even call it almost a genre now within the whole history of photography, especially in New York photography. This was a street. Literally two days ago, I was showing, because I now have uh, the, the honor of teaching all those great things that I've been taught by people like you. I was showing the work of Walker Evans, Passenger, 1938. Uh, and that night, I think I opened up your book. So it was interesting to see, it's like 1938, someone is photographing people in the subway with a hidden camera. Similar but very different process as you did. And the subway looked very different. But there are still many things that are in common with the pictures that you have taken and in common with all their works that we have seen also in the subway, you know, uh, Bruce Davidson, all there is, no way. I think, you know, you know? I mean, um, I, the subway is a bit of a microcosm of the city because right. oh, yeah. all walks of life end up crunched together in a small place, you know, you know, going down a tube to some sort of yeah. place where they're going to do whatever, but so you have this kind of interaction that is very human, very universal experience. I mean, I could just say to any of you here, tell me that you don't all have some subway story experience. You know what I mean? And if you think about it, you will come up with some incredible thing that you witnessed or, you know, were subject to in the subway. And um, so it's kind of universal in a sense that it touches all of us. And um, and I guess you know it, it's it speaks to our you know humanity in spite of the differences. That, you know what I mean? That you know black, white, whatever, Asian. You know you're you're all there. You're all going somewhere, and yet there's a common experience that you share briefly, whether you choose to admit it or share it, 
like, oh man, I remember it was like some YouTube thing that I saw about, you know, the people begging? Did you see that on the YouTube? There was a skit, right, that they did. First of all, there's this guy who's just a beggar, comes on the train asking for this, and then the next person comes into the car and then grabs the person and pretends he's the cop and takes him off of the train to get off the train and then he goes around and he starts asking for money from people, right? And then there's a group of musicians who come in through the door into the car, right? And the whole thing just keeps going and going and each time, each different scenario, they're all asking for money. It was amazing. It was like, like super, you know, super cool. But would you, would you say that you being Canadian, we used to have a lot of discussions about Europe, where you came from and how you grew up and how this city was and how it affected you. Yeah, but I mean, you, you made it your own. You live here. Yeah. Anna was born here and, and, you know, you have a family and, you know, Eliza, and, you, know, you have a family and you have roots here now. And, but you still have your, your, your foundations as a person, is how you grew up in Canada. Where I don't know if that really makes a difference. I, I mean, my coming down and seeing you know that first year was yeah very impactful for me. We're talking about yeah, the yeah. first year was yeah. just like But now I'm you know probably literally living here almost as long as I was living in Canada. So it would seem quiet there compared to here. It's, uh, but were, I'm here because of photography. If you were going to do, if you were, let's say you want to continue this, or if you were going to do it from the fresh today, how, would, do, you, how do you feel you'd like, would you I do would, it the same way? Or? I would not do it. You wouldn't? Not I would not go back and photograph again, though. No. I'm done. So if you had what never if, done what it. What if you had never done it before, and you, would do, you, you had the idea about doing it now? Well, Joe and I, we've taught a class together for how long? Started with the the New York photo project and it became seminar picture making and you know every year first semester and we would send all these students out to do these assignments where they had to produce you know Chris you know and if it's not number one it's number two and what is it go and shoot on the subway because We'd send it and everybody would go out in it and the first thing they would say is like, you know, oh my God, this is a challenge. It's not easy to do because you have to confront not only the people you meet, but also yourself out there taking pictures in a confined space where, you know what I mean? So... But uh, let, me just be, let me just be a photographer for a minute. So let's just say you're excited. Okay, you have a lot of energy, and you say to me, Joe, guess what? I really, I'm enamored to do the subway. How do you think you would approach it as a photographer today? I would use a film camera. You would use a film camera. Yeah. And, and why uh, is that? Why would you use a film camera? Because I, I'm not interested in digital. All right, but get, okay. <laughs> I don't like the. I mean, I don't like the process. That's all. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. I think if anything is, I don't like the fact that you get instantaneous results. I think to, so you, to you, do something and see it right away defeats the whole purpose of photography. To me, that whole purpose of photography is an act of reflection. So it means you cannot see what you're doing immediately. You have to give it time so that when it comes, you know, as you process the film, right, and then you look at the negatives, you can get like, you know, you can get kind of excited looking at the negatives, and then you make the contact sheets, and then you look at the image, and it's like <coughs> you rediscover. I'm not sure exactly how to phrase the question, but maybe you'll get what I'm saying. If you're shooting from the hip a lot, though, what's the difference? You just don't look at it. And even you know, like with the I, process, like when you shoot film, fair question, no. looking through the viewfinder versus not, you think it's just about the feeling of being there? And fair, that's the separation a very, between no, that's a very fair question, but mind or just being there? If you look, I mean, if you work with the rangefinder, all right, and if you use the lens and you set your pre-focus, and if you do it enough with a 35 millimeter, if I know, you know, this distance, mm -hmm. I know what I'm looking at. Do I see it exactly composed? No. Do you know what I mean? No. 
That I don't know, but I'm okay with that. I know what I want to see, and I got that in in the distance and whatever. And I don't know that she might be out of focus, and how that's going to look, like the picture of the woman on the platform looking at, she was looking down. I don't know if she was looking at the man specifically, but there's that guy out of focus in the corner. He's got the tie on. But it, you know what I'm saying? The look on her face and that guy sets up this thing. Now, did I see that exactly like that? No. But you know what? I love that notion of accident, that something comes alive. Like, it's like I'm, that's what I feel is like part of that whole thing about not being totally in control. So, but in terms of like being able to get things sharp, you can get really, really good at it. Because I only shot with one camera, so I sort of knew where the frame was, right? But I didn't know, like, if your head was going to be there or there, you know, that, no. So, so you were talking about, like, the different, the distance in, in time, like, the, I, I don't know what to say, like, the experience of talking about, like, the separation in time of the time you shoot it to the time that I you think look it, at I it. think it's really yeah. important for me. I think it's, I mean, like I said, um, it's really important. And the longer that I gave time to this, I mean, obviously, I wasn't constantly thinking about it. No, not at all. But when I did come back to it, look, I said, okay, now I'm going to do something. So I just did what I could with what I had. And there wasn't, like, a tremendous amount. So it's a different thing, you know. It's, I, I wasn't intentionally going to go out and do anything. It just happened that I was kind of taken by this situation and kept photographing. And in fact, I would cut the frames that I liked and just put them all together to make contact sheets. So I don't even know how many rolls I shot. You know, because I only kept the parts that I liked. So you threw out negatives? I know. <laughs> so you, you I did, know. So wait, 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 that's kind of interesting. So what you did basically was what we do in the digital world today is we just chip. And we go trash. So basically what you did was you trashed the negatives that you didn't want, is what you're saying to us. Is that right or no? I didn't keep it at, no. I never, I never you really learned them, you how to work like a, like a photographer, you know, like a, you know, like... Fair, I never made that. contact sheets before I came to ICP. I just developed the film, looked at the image, and made a print. Wow. So when I came to ICP, that was the first time that I, it's, you know, they got mad at me and said, you got to make a contact sheet, what are you doing? <laughs> they said, well, I don't know how to make a contact sheet. But does that also mean that then the pictures that are here are pictures that you chose at that time because they spoke to you most then? Yeah. So, what you lost is no because I, mean, I would oh, wait. take no wait. means a couple of those roles I would you know go out specifically and just shoot right, right? no I I understand and but keep I... all that but sometimes I'd have half a roll on a different subject and then right you know, of course half of you know or no, ten I, I, frames I'm familiar like, cut out the ten frames and that's something I know I know how you shoot but what I'm I'm just thinking about which is interesting is yes there is a loss there because you 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 chimped or whatever the word is that you use preemptively, but it's it's also kind of interesting because and I don't know where this would fit in with the project, but like do you remember why you chose these? Do you know what I mean? Like versus now. Because it's like you it's almost like I didn't know that until right now. It's like you've already curated, but you curated when you were just you know, right. know anything. Yeah. yeah. A bay. So, yeah. like. I've done that. But that's, many, I mean, but that's an interesting, potentially, a point of reflection for you if you do want to maybe evolve yeah. the writing, is like to include that information. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, because, because what was it about the shots then? Because you know what? If you had all of it, if you hadn't shipped, maybe you would choose something different now. And that's not like coulda, woulda, shoulda. It's like, that's interesting. What spoke to you? about those shots, because like I can see some themes, right? You know, like you have like clear dualities present at certain times between people, between people and, and like hard, soft space, right? But it's interesting, it's just interesting to think about that and try to recall, because like I can recall 
sometimes with my own work, why I chose to pursue a path with that and like execute that version of it. But it's really yeah, interesting me, to look back me, on it. Uh, let's leave it this way. I had one camera and one lens. And then I would go out and make pictures, not always about the, su the subway. I'd go out and make pictures about whatever I was doing. Yeah. Right? But then as the subway started to sort of, you know, I started to focus a little more, then I said, well, i got to keep all of this stuff together. Right, but so what then I said, that's when I decided, okay, I'm going to take that stuff out of there. But did you have an idea of what the story was you thought you were telling by putting these pictures together then? Did you have an idea of what that narrative was then? And what was that? Maybe that's just... No, not really, no. Okay. No. I as I said in the... Part of this collection that shows these pieces of these frames. Well, actually, one of the you, dummies has uh, in the yeah. front of it a contact sheet. That would be amazing. I mean, yeah. It, it, yeah, it should be. It has a contact here. sheet. Yeah, I, I did one like dummy that. where there was a contact sheet because, again, I wanted to emphasize that it was film. But, you know, I don't know. Okay, so when it this got, it got deleted. <laughs> I think there are any other questions back there? I don't know. If, I want to make sure that yes, yes. Yeah, I was just gonna say. So uh, I'm I'm not an ICP student, I'm an NYU student. Uh, I took a class with Joe, and like you said, one of his first assignments was to shoot on the subway. Um, and I had a really interesting experience myself. But I'm really curious to you know uh, what you think the value of like shooting on the subway versus just sitting on the subway is. Um, versus shooting on the street, um, like both this kind of a reflective process and as an observational process, and like if, that, if that's different now than it was. When I don't think shooting on the subway or shooting on the street is any different at all. Yeah. It's just what you choose to, you know, what you choose to want, what you want to look at. Yeah. To me, the subway, you know, I had to use it a fair bit. I think I was living out in Queens at the time, and uh, so I had to ride in, and then, you, you know, it was it just became a thing that as I, you know how when you're a student, you just sort of like, you always have your camera with you all the time. So, you know, ever ready, you know, like a Boy Scout. So, <laughs> I was always, you know, kind of, and so then it, you know, you just shoot a lot of different stuff, and but most of it isn't so. Yeah, but, it, but right. The, qu the question is, would, would, would the experience of just riding the subway, I think that's what you're saying, as opposed to taking pictures on a subway, right? Is, am I getting yeah. this right? Yeah. You know, is is there a difference? What, what do you learn from that experience, by 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 either sitting or engaging yourself? Any time that I didn't have my camera and I'm riding on the subway. Um, I would, I could tell you like any number of pictures that never got taken. I think my, my, when I go on a train even today, I just look at people. I just watch the world out there. I can't help it. It's just kind of inside of me. I imagine, you know, what the hell is going on over there? It's like, look at that person right there. It's like, you know, it's like, oh my God. You know, so it's like you just are, you know, it's so, just think about it. You're so engaged like to me. Now, there's other people's, other people there who like, you know, this is it. This is it. And, you know, there's a picture there. You see this couple? And they're like clutching all of these bags. And their eyes are closed. You know, they're kind of plump and... It's in the book. Those people are like those other people who you think they're asleep. But as soon as the train comes, they're up and they're out. You know what I mean? You could have sworn they were asleep, but no, they're not. They're just like, okay, my stop. And they go. Just like you see people. This is New York. You get on the train. You just don't get on the train. You walk to a specific spot on the platform. Because when you get on the train there, you're going to be the first person off the closest to the stairs as you possibly can be. So you're ready, boom, you're out of there. Is that not true? Yes. It is. It's like, it's this. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, having shot on the subway in 1984 as you did and shooting on it now, I don't think there's any difference. I think it's dangerous. 
I think it was dangerous then, I think it's dangerous now. Otherwise, your camera would have, would have been right up to your eye and you would have taken the pictures. I will, I've, I've had my conversation, I will never shoot with a camera on the subway again. My iPhone though, different story, because it's here, it's here, it's here. You know, it's very easy to take it with the iPhone, but I will never uh, show a camera on the subway again. It's just too dangerous. I've done that People, a lot. It's, it's really not that dangerous. Well, again, we all, we all have individual you know, experiences. Yeah, everybody's right. yeah, and, and, yeah, and I get that. But, so but, but the mood of people who are in a confined space is very different from what it is if you're walking down the street. It, it is different than on the street. I have to agree it, 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 It's really important to draw the same I mean, I can't imagine being a teacher and saying, go shoot on the subway. I don't think I would do it. I, it's too it's too heavy. I mean, you really have to acknowledge it. You've got to teach. You've got to prepare. It's an easy one. <laughs> I, just, I just have to add this, which I, I think is important for me and Brian. Brian was taking pictures on the subway. We lived in the same building in Park Slope, you remember? Uh, and it was a four train journey from the F train to the A train to the four train to the six train every day. So we spent a good hour and some odd minutes on the train. And I, I was falling behind, and I started feeling bad. And, and like one photography student to another will always kick us in the booty and say, "You're not doing enough." So I started taking, pic, trying to take pictures on the subway. But my strategy was, I, and I grew up here, and I'm a tough guy. I, I know how to bark back. You know, I'm a little like Donna. You know, we don't fool around. We got something to say, we say it. But I was so nervous that I, I had a strategy that I built. The train would pull into the station. As soon as the door would open, I'd grab the picture and get off the train. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I did it many a time. I've done it many a time. And I can and I shooting from on the platform is easy because then you can they're in there in the car right, and you can right, shoot. Right. But you know, this thing of like and, and I even would say to somebody, you know, I would say you took my picture, I didn't take the picture. You know, the sneaky, insecure. Yeah. But he was doing it, he had a he had a way, I couldn't shoot from there. So I, I went a different direction, and that's a whole other conversation. But I learned from him, and I can kind of learn from each other. But you know, it, it, it is it is a time. I have to say that I am proud of this book. I I've been hearing about this thing for <laughs> like Anna said, <laughs> did. We've been hearing about this baby. So this is his baby. So uh, if you don't mind. Thank you all for coming. Thank, Thank you, Camera Club. We love you guys. You know, you're historical for us.